Night at the Opera, it was a very big album in, in England and sort of everywhere, really, I think. And it had consolidated what we'd done in America. We just started, really, with the third album. So it was the sort of clincher, in a way, in, in the early stage of our career. It was sort of life or death. I mean, it was, it was definitely sink or swim. If that album hadn't done what it did, that would have been the end of the band, without any question. It's easy to gamble when you've got nothing to lose. I would say we wanted to, to do the, the harmonic things, but better, but hopefully. That it, vocally, that Yes were doing, and, but combine that with the, the wonderful, uh, brutal, heavy influence of what Led Zeppelin were doing. And that was at the time we started. Obviously, we changed as we went along. But I would say that more than anything else, we wanted to combine those two sort of genres. We just actually started the song Bohemian Rhapsody, which had the mock operetta in the middle. And we, by sheer coincidence, we sat down that night very late, maybe two in the morning, and watched in a very a video. Videos that ain't video machines were just invented then. Of uh, the Marx Brothers, a night at the opera. And Freddie and I turned round to each other, remember, and said, "Cool, that's a good title," and because we'd just been doing this mock operetta. And then we said, I think, to everybody else, and everybody went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I think A Night at the Opera was a good title for, for that album, I feel, because it had operatic content. And we were, while we were doing that album, we felt um, we've got to come up with a title that means something, you know. It was a spontaneous decision, and then we looked into it, and there were a lot of parallels. I mean, the Marx Brothers were sort of, they took, you know, they took a lot of care in their work, and they, I mean, Roger's got a few books on it, and uh, he sort of looked it up, and it, it's quite fascinating. What happened with A Night at the Opera was that we just suddenly realised what kind of paintbrushes we had in our hands. I guess it suddenly isn't the right word. It was a gradual realisation, because even on Queen 2, you can hear a lot of the, um, the beginnings of those kind of um, Baroque kind of expeditions. You know, if you listen to My Fairy King on, on Queen 2, there's a lot of Bohemian Rhapsody starting to take shape there from Freddie and, and from all of us, really. We loved the studio. We, we just found it an endless, limitless canvas. And we were in a very wonderful time where all these new bits of equipment were coming in. The Beatles had only just kind of got into multi-tracking, really, by hooking up machines to run together. And we had access to the probably the first 16 tracks, the first 24 tracks. So we had great tools in our hands, and we were just ready to go for it. And then as soon as you've got the toy in your hand and you figured out how to use it, then you just let your imagination run riot. So we were in a great place and we just loved it. We had a great time. <laughs> 